Hey there everybody and welcome to my review of the Ford Focus Estate. For over 20 years now the Ford Focus has been the benchmark for a fun handling family hatchback and I've got the latest version in estate form to see if it's still just as fun or if rivals have managed to catch up with it. When it comes to styling, I think we can all agree that the previous generation Focus was not the best looking car in its class. It just looked a little bit too fussy and took a long time to get used to. However, I think Ford have cracked it with this Mark IV. It's just got all the lines and bulges in the right places and I like the thick rear wheel arches. Even in a state form, it looks like a very handsome car. But let me know what you think by clicking down in the comments section below. But I personally think Ford have cracked it with this Mark IV and it's a very handsome car in both hatchback and estate form. Well, enough with the outside, let's have a look at the inside. Sat here in the Ford Focus and the first thing that hits you is just how much nicer it is to sit in compared to its predecessor. The design is a lot more modern and a lot more grown up and it's a lot more better for it. I also like the choice of materials as well. So we've got soft touch plastics on top of the dash and the doors here along with some leatherette and some cloth. We've also got soft touch bits on this panel here as well as leatherette here on the center armrest. And then from this section downwards, it is all hard scratchy plastics. And what has disappointed me is some of the plastics down below are not just scratchy, they're actually a little bit flimsy as well. So definitely not on a par with something like a Volkswagen Golf. But I do like the overall design, it's very, modern and also quite simplistic as well in the way they've done it. The infotainment screen is sitting high up on the dashboard so you don't have to take your eye too much off the road in order to look at it. We've got a couple of controls underneath in order to use and navigate some of the menus. We then got a couple of large air vents which are always handy and then below we've got the air conditioning controls. So on this ST line we have got air conditioning but as you go higher up throughout the range you will get things like dual zone climate control. We also then got lots of cubby spaces and I am very impressed with this on the Focus. We've got some very decent sized door bins that are lined with fabric so you can chuck items in there and they're not going to rattle around a bunch. We've also got a little space here next to the steering wheel which you can put your wallet or a set of keys in. We then have two cup holders here behind the gear lever and they've got these little movable dividers so you can actually put different sized cups in there. That's actually a very handy feature. There's a little tray just behind the parking brake here and I'd recommend you stick your key in there, especially if you've got keyless entry and go. Then in front of the gear lever, we've got a very usable space where you can put your phone. You've also got a USB input as well as a 12 volt socket and you can chuck a load of items in there and they will be not rattling around everywhere because it is lined with rubber. And then finally, we have got the center armrest with a little tray in here and then underneath we have got an additional USB as well as some extra storage space. I said finally, I did actually forget the glove box, which is actually of a decent size. It's not lined with any fabric, but there is a separate tray in order to put the owner's manual there so you can use the rest of the glove space how you want it. Also, the driving position is really spot on. You can sit quite low in the car and you can get the perfect driving position because the steering wheel has both rake and reach adjustment. So that is very handy. Also, the steering wheel is really lovely to hold on to. It's a nice leather bound steering wheel with perforated leather, but it feels quite chunky in your hand as well. So that's something I do like about it. Also, the gear lever on this ST line version has got a little bit of chrome on top and some leather inserts on the side. And again, it's just got a lovely use about it and I really do like it. Even the seats themselves have got a nice design. And if you go higher up in the range, you can move on to things like leather and uh, and heated seats and so on. So yeah, I am very much impressed with the uh, cockpit of the Ford Focus. Do apologize for my voice going a little bit craggy as I have got a really horrible cold. But that's enough with the front. Let's go have a sit down in the back. Sat here in the back of the Focus is actually really spacious back here. That driver's seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot seven tall and five foot seven wide. And as you can see, I've got a bloody huge amount of knee room there and headroom is really good as well. You could definitely get a couple of adults here over six foot tall sat in the back. You could get three adults sat side by side as long as they haven't got broad shoulders like myself, otherwise it would be a heck of a pinch. When it comes to cubby spaces, well you've got some decent sized door bins and they are again lined with fabric and you have got some pockets here on the back of the seats. However, there is no through loading from the boot into the cabin for longer items, nor is there any armrest 
with additional cup holders. So that's a little bit disappointing. However, the windows are of a nice big size and they do open all the way down. And because this is the estate, you do also get additional windows in the C pillars to allow a bit more light in. And that is definitely handy because with this dark headlining, it could feel a little bit gloomy, sorry, at times. Also, there is a little bit of a drop when it comes to interior quality because on the top of the doors, it's hard scratchy plastics. But then again, that is pretty much the norm in this class. You also got Isofix supports on the outer seats and they do come with these wonderful little clips that are very much VW Group-esque, so they are easy to lose. However, it's easy to find the Isofix support once they are removed. But apart from that, it's actually really comfortable back here. There's actually more space than I anticipated. Now, if you do go for the hatchback, there's a little bit more of a sloping roof line. So if you are gonna look at carrying adults in the back of the hatchback, just be wary, they could rub their head against the ceiling. But other than that, this is absolutely really spacious, almost on a par with the class best, like the likes of the Skoda Octavia. Now, speaking of practicality, let's go have a look at that boot, shall we? So opening the boot of the Ford Focus Estate presents you with 575 litres of space, which is very much close to the class best with the likes of the Skoda Octavia. But not only that, it's actually a very usable space. The opening is nice and wide and it's a square load area. It's also near enough flat because you've got no load lip here because of the variable boot floor. But I will mention that the actual bumper itself does protrude about five inches from the edge of the boot. So if you are loading and unloading heavy items on a regular basis, you might want to invest in some bumper protection. But that's of course up to yourselves. But I really do like the boot area here in the Ford Focus Estate. There's a lot of useful features. So we have got some shopping hooks, so you can actually hold some shopping there and it's not rolling around in the cabin. We've got a 12 volt socket. We've got some tethering hooks to tie down. And with the actual variable boot floor itself, you can move it and turn it into a divider and keep some objects separated from others. But this is actually the one highlight I really liked here on the Ford Focus Estate. So the tonneau cover you can remove and you can actually stow it underneath the floor. But unlike a lot of tonneau covers where you have to kind of pinch the springs and pull it in and kind of get the uh, tonneau cover out, can be a little bit awkward and a bit annoying. This is actually really simple. There's a little toggle, or so, and if you give it a pull, it literally brings it out like so. And you just put it in the load bay just like that. It's that easy. And um, even more, you've actually got a couple of handles, so you can give them a pull and get the seats to go. Oh, well, actually, it's completely flat apart from the one on the left because the headrest is up. But that is a brilliant feature here on the Focus Estate. Definitely a highlight and just shows how much practicality and also how much Ford have thought about the practicality of the new Ford Focus. So yeah, I am very much impressed with the practicality of this car, but I think it's now time to find out if it's still as fun as it's always been. So once you get driving in the Ford Focus, first impressions are actually really good. It's a nice, easy and comfortable car to drive and visibility is really good, especially in the estate version. In the hatchback, if you're looking over your shoulder, there's actually quite a pronounced C-pillar, so it does mean there's a bit of a blind spot. But in the estate, there's additional windows there, which does mean there's not too much of a blind spot, especially compared to the hatchback. The only thing I would say is in the front, you have got some reasonably chunky A-pillars, so just be a little bit wary when you pull up to junctions and roundabouts. But apart from that, first impressions are really good. Even the wing mirrors are actually, I think, of a small size, but they don't give off any wind noise whatsoever. So that is an additional bonus. So when it comes to engines in the Focus range, there's essentially four engines to choose from, two petrols and two diesels. The petrols are a one litre and a 1.5 litre, and the diesels are a 1.5 litre and two litre. All of them are turbocharged, and you get the choice of either a six-speed manual or eight-speed automatic. So I've got the ST line trim level, so I've got the one litre three cylinder petrol producing 125 brake horsepower, and I've got that mated to a six speed manual box. And you know what? I actually think it's kind of the pick of the range. Yes, you can go for a more powerful 1.5 with either 150 brake horsepower, and again, depending on the trim level, 182 brake horsepower. But I'd actually say save your money and perhaps just buy yourself an extra couple of packs for the car and a couple of optional extras. 
this 125 brake horsepower engine is actually really nice. If you're a regular on auto bears, you will know that I'm a big fan of these one liter three cylinder units and I've driven a number of them with the Volkswagen Group. However, with this Ford, because you've got an extra 10 brake horsepower, especially with a larger car, it just suits the Focus really well. And it's actually got a bit of character to it. If I drop it down a gear and put my foot down, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's actually, I always talk about the three cylinder thrum, but this has got a three cylinder growl. It's actually really distinctive. And it does mean that because the Focus is such a fun car to drive, it just adds to that fun dynamic. And it's uh, definitely the engine to go for in my personal opinion. Of course, if you've got any questions about the engines, put them down in the comment section below. Now, when it comes to economy, Ford say that this one litre should do about 47.1 miles per gallon, and that's on a combined WLTP cycle. Now, a little bit of an issue when I got the car, it got delivered to me with just 56 miles on the clock. So the engine had barely been run in, and uh, I've had the focus for just shy of a week, and I've put over 600 additional miles on it. Yes, that's included a couple of SMMT test days and just driving about Milton Keynes. I mean, who wouldn't want to drive around this gorgeous town? And as I've been doing more, more and more miles in the Focus, I've managed to get the economy to kind of an average of around 42 miles per gallon when I'm just driving about, tootling around about town. But I know if I've done a couple of journeys at uh, at kind of a lower speed and I've easily gotten over 50 so again it is a nice frugal and an economical engine again another reason to go for it but yes I am very much enjoying the one litre three cylinder it's one of those arguments you can go into a dealership and you just don't think a one litre will have the power to move a car of this size especially the estate version but it does and as we all know from Ford they do a cracking one litre eco boost. When it comes to ride and handling, this has always been a strength for the Ford. Even back when the Focus was released back in, what, 1998, 99, the emphasis on the car was to be a fun family hatchback and they haven't changed that ethos. The ride is absolutely brilliant. Just going along here on just regular roads it feels really compliant it deals with the bumps and imperfections absolutely beautifully even on this st line with the lowered suspension it doesn't firm up or anything like that it just rides over them really well yes on a couple of occasions i've been driving at low speed over a manhole cover or a pothole and there has been a boom like resonate into the cabin but then again that's what you would expect from any car in this segment it, it really is a joy to drive the only real negative I've had is I've done a couple of long journeys in the Focus and the only thing that's really kind of disrupted the refinement is tyre roar coming into the cabin. That's really only been it. As I mentioned earlier, there's little to no wind noise coming off these wing mirrors and the engine, you really have to put your foot down in order to hear it. So that's the only real negative when it comes to driving in long journeys. But then again, with the ST line, you got slightly larger alloys. The steering, again, is just an absolute joy to behold, and it's brilliant that Ford have not changed their kind of mindset with the Ford Focus. It's not got too much weight in it, but it has got plenty of feel, and it is a joy to use. You could just it's weird, the Focus just wants you to throw it into corners and being here in Milton Keynes with several roundabouts to uh, contend with, it's just a joy to go around them. You don't feel like it's a chore having to drive around these roundabouts. If anything, you just want to go around them again and again. That's how much fun the Focus brings you. And also with that fun comes a bit of confidence. You feel confident enough to chuck it in at a bit of a faster speed and you just get to enjoy that experience and I mean it's just so keen to go around there's no slip no understeer job done it's a testament to the team at Ford for just making sure 
that this can handle sweetly and ride beautifully, and it does. It's one of the things that I do really like about the Ford Focus against pretty much all of its rivals. And if you want to go for a mad Focus, then you now can order the Ford Focus ST, which I have had a very brief little drive in. And I can tell you that is absolutely brilliant. That's a joy to behold as well. Ford have just hit the nail on the head with the ride and handling. And long may that continue with the uh, Focus range, especially when the Mad RS comes out in probably in the next year and a half or so. All very good and promising stuff. Something I am actually also really liking on the Ford Focus, and I've spoken to one of the guys at Ford and they mentioned that they worked on it, is actually the gear change. This six-speed manual is just a joy to use. It's just, it's one of the best actually I've used. I mean, it's not quite up there with say the likes of Honda's manual gearboxes, but then again, they're on a completely different league, but there's hardly any to no notchiness in it and it's got a really nice positive throw. So don't always think you have to go for the automatic. Do try the manual gearbox because I think you might be pleasantly surprised. Now it's not all been perfect here in the Ford Focus. I have identified a couple of little niggles with my time in the car. So firstly, we've got a sun visor with a vanity mirror, but no vanity light, which is quite surprising in a car in this segment. So if you're going on a late night dinner date and you just want to check you've got nothing stuck in your teeth before you go in, unfortunately, you won't be able to do so in the Focus. Secondly, I've already brought it up, which is this, the additional tire noise that comes into the cabin when you're driving on any long distance journeys. It's not a huge negative, but because it, the Focus does everything so well, it is something that got highlighted quite quickly. But if you've got your music playing or if you've got a passenger in the car, then that will easily drone it out, so to speak, so you're not actually having to hear it. Now, thirdly, we've got the infotainment system, which is absolutely fine by itself. And as I mentioned, you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on everything bar the entry level focus. And the Apple CarPlay has been not as crisp or as kind of clear to use as other Apple CarPlays I've used in other cars. Some of the menu systems have not been the easiest to use and doing things like navigating the A to Z of music and bands I want to listen to is actually not let me do it. I only kind of pick up recommended bands I've listened to in the last week or so. So I found that a little bit um, a little bit annoying as I couldn't listen to what who I wanted to and I actually had to go into the phone itself in order to get the band or get the music I wanted to listen to. So that's something we could uh, you know ask for to look at for the next generation of infotainment system. And then finally, I don't think this is a fault with the car. I just don't think it was actually set up prior to me getting it but that's the lane departure assist and lane departure warning system now i know some people have mentioned that you can't turn the system off well the issue i've had in the focus this week is that i've not been able to turn the system on so i've had it in its most um i'll say vigorous setting so that the steering wheel vibrates if you stray out of lane but it's just not worked at all so i think that's just something that wasn't turned on when the car was PDI'd before I got it. But again, it's only a minor niggle, but it's, you know, one of those aids that a lot of people like to have when they do lots of some uh, long distance journeys. But other than that, the Focus has been an absolute joy and pleasure to drive. It's, yeah, the, the pros seriously outweigh the cons on this car. And that clearly explains why the Focus and the Fiesta are always in like the top five best-selling cars in the UK. The Fiesta always keeping it at number one. They just do everything absolutely right and they are always competitively priced against its rivals. Now, yes, they're not always the most practical and perhaps the most well-built, but they're well-built enough so it stands out from the class in other aspects in terms of the drivability. I hope that makes sense in that way. In fact, that you'll look over some of the little niggles or some of the plastics in the cabin because you want that pure driving joy. And that's the best way I can kind of give you my final impression or my, you know, my summary of the Ford Focus. I mean, it's always been a car that's focused on fun as well as being a practical family hatchback. 
and Ford have just done it again and hit the nail on the head. So what are my thoughts on the Ford Focus ST Line Estate? Well, in one word, it's brilliant. It drives incredibly well, it handles stupidly well, it always puts a smile on my face, even driving around Milton Keynes with all of its roundabouts. It's also a lot more practical than it was before. Yes, it's not as practical as some of its rivals and some of the build quality is not as good as some of its rivals, but these are really minor little things to look at. The fact of the matter is Ford know how to make a very good family hatchback and they're still doing it now. And also if you want a bit more fun, you can now go for the Ford Focus ST and that is just a joy to drive as well. Arguably one of the best hot hatches in its class. If it doesn't have that quite madness that the Civic Type R has, but they've done everything incredibly well. Even the gear shift in here is a joy to use. It's just a lovely car and Ford, they just stick to the fundamentals and they do them very well. So I am very pleased. If you are after a family hatchback or a family estate, you've got to have a look at the Ford Focus definitely and take a test drive. It is another job well done from Ford. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Ford Focus Estate. If you've got any questions at all, please put them down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications icon to let you know when I, Dave the Auto Bear, bring out a new video. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and I do advise you follow for additional content including live videos and a lot of extra still images. But other than that guys, again, put any comments and questions in the box below and I will catch you all in the next video. So take care and bye-bye.